morning, everyone. Welcome to the service here today at um, Beaumaris Morty Alec Baptist Church. Great to see you here in person um, today. And for those who are watching online, a warm welcome to you too when you, um, when you join the service. Well, we never know what a week's going to bring, do we? Who would have thought last Sunday that um, within a day there was going to be such a devastating earthquake that um, would hit Turkey and Syria? And uh, as the weeks unfolded, the stories are pretty grim, aren't they? Um, Baptist World Aid are partnering with organisations close to the disaster area to provide much needed aid. So if your heart's touched to donate towards that cause, there's um, an avenue you could use through um, Baptist World Aid website. And there are other aid organisations we know. A colleague of mine at work also didn't know what a week was going to bring just a few weeks ago when her father collapsed and uh, required resuscitation. Uh, her brother-in-law provided CPR for him for a time until the paramedics arrived. And um, the father survived that. Um, a few days after this, as Dad was recovering in hospital, I asked my colleague how her brother-in-law was doing, having um, a first aid background and knowing that it can be quite traumatic to do CPR. And she said he was having trouble unseeing what had happened at that time. Um, his intervention had saved the dad's life, which was fantastic, but the unseeing part of that had um, really unsettled me. And that word unseeing struck me, knowing what was um, uh, coming up in the service today, because it reminded me that there are times when we have trouble unseeing things that have um, happened in our lives. Sometimes we've chosen to see things that perhaps would have been better not to see. And other times it's our perspective of things that we've seen that's, um, that's not correct and that that can be unsettling for us. Well, Pastor David's continuing his series today on filling the slate of my life. And today's focus is what you fill your eyes with. We need to be seeing things through God's perspective, not simply our own perspective. Today, there's going to be opportunity in the service for you to share with our church family around the blessing that you've received as you've connected or, and or contributed in some way to the life of our church family. This is going to be part of, uh, or is a part of our February focus on connecting and contributing in 2023. You know, there's great blessing that comes from being a part of a small group or in serving in some way um, in our in our church family and alongside others of our church family. You're never too old, you're never too young to contribute. Pastor David's going to speak more to this during the service a bit later, but I'm giving you a heads up that there's going to be an opportunity for you to actually share in the service today. We'd love to hear from, uh, from you on that. Let's pray together before we sing praise to our God. Heavenly Father, thank you that uh, you always give the right perspective on life. And thank you for the words that we'll hear to that effect today and help us to uh, keep those things in our heart as we listen to Pastor David a bit later in the service. Help us to listen and, and, and feel and understand the words of the songs that we're going to sing today, knowing that we um, are part of your family and that we have a special place with you. Bless us as we uh, participate in the service today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my fears are gone. 
Well, morning, everyone. Good to uh, see you. If you're uh, here with us on site, a special welcome to you. If you're watching online, hi to you as well. And uh, we're glad that you've joined us, whether it's on site or online. And uh, it's an opportunity to, uh, to worship together. It's an opportunity to share together because we're here because of uh, seeking to um, uh, develop a relationship with God. But we're also here seeking to develop a relationship with other people. And uh, sharing opportunities are there every week to, uh, to connect with other people uh, over coffee, morning tea afterwards. We'd encourage you, uh, if you're on site, to, to do that. Uh, we um, have that regularly, barista coffee or uh, regular morning tea and coffee in, in the back hall. And uh, then next week, we've got our um, monthly picnic in the park. Uh, next uh, next Sunday, so that's a great opportunity to connect with other people across the ages, have some fun, uh, just to really enjoy uh, sharing together. And uh, so we encourage you in these things. But um, our focus through February is on opportunities to connect and contribute at BMBC during 2023. And uh, so again, uh, we want to encourage you to, uh, to consider and explore that, take some next steps in that un under God. And we're going to have a sharing time in a, in a few minutes, an opportunity. Uh, how, has, how has connecting with others in a small group, how has connecting with others or, or serving alongside others in a ministry team, how has that blessed you? Those of you who've, uh, who, who've been a part of a small group, those of you who are a part of a small group, those of you who um, uh, serve in, in different ways, uh, uh, in different situations, how has that been a blessing? Because in, in the midst of our lives, there can be, uh, we can sometimes look at things as burdens, but actually they're blessings. It's a blessing to be a part of connecting with others in a small group. It's a blessing to serve alongside others on a ministry team. So we're going to have a sharing opportunity around that in, in a minute. Uh, nothing, nothing that's been uh, planned or teed up. It's just spontaneous. It's, a, it's informal. It's a part of who we are and what we do together. So just be thinking about that. But one of the ways that we share as well or seek to share is intergenerationally. And uh, that, uh, uh, that is about actually that we seek to be a church uh, that is intergenerational. We seek to be a church not just with small groups as an add-on, but a church of small groups. We seek to be a church that engages with and, and witnesses to our community. But we seek to be intergenerational as well. And so I want to encourage you even in morning tea this morning to, uh, to, to actually uh, connect with and uh, speak with someone of a different age demographic to you, someone uh, different to who you might already know, uh, to, to encourage you in that. And, and our children's ministry, we launched last week, as you know, with the, the backpacks and, and uh, the, uh, the prayer segment there. But uh, Lighthouse Children's Ministry, they're going to head out in, in a moment, but uh, they um, they're, just want to let you know what they're doing. They're starting a new series on your, called You're Invited. You're Invited. We want you to be praying about this. You're invited. The children are learning about you're invited to be a part of, of, of God's family, and everyone has the choice to say yes or to say no. And uh, so they're, they're, that's what their focus is. So we want you to be praying about that. We want you to be uh, just uh, having conversations with the children and, and uh, uh, young people uh, across the ages about these things. And uh, they're also doing a segment on uh, hard questions, uh, uh, qu questions, big questions, where the children can ask questions about anything about uh, that they might not understand perplexing uh, faith questions. So pray for our children, pray for our leaders, connect with them, ask them about how they're going, ask them about what they're doing uh, over morning tea. Want to encourage you in that. So let's uh, just briefly pray for them before they head out now. Lord God, we thank you for um, uh, that, that you have a heart for all people. You have a heart for children, for young people, for, uh, for, for, for families, for um, uh, seniors, all ages. Are significant to you and uh, so we we thank you for the the children and, and their leaders and as they um, uh, begin this this focus on um, big questions as well as uh, of faith as well as uh, you're invited we pray for your work in their lives help them to uh, to be learning and growing and uh, and and finding and following jesus as uh, as as you want for all of us in our lives and we pray this in and through the name of jesus amen Okay, kids, you can head out to, uh, to, to your uh, children's ministry now, and uh, we look forward to connecting with you afterwards. 
So as I said, next week, picnic at the park is another opportunity to, uh, to share. Uh, tomorrow morning, for those of you who did know Ruth, uh, who was connected in here quite some years ago, uh, where there's a memorial service for Ruth uh, here at 10.30 tomorrow morning, for those uh, who are wondering about when that's going to be, tomorrow morning, 10.30. Okay, so opportunity to, uh, to share, uh, how have you been blessed? Uh, stories of life and faith, uh, how have you been blessed? But the focus today particularly, have you been blessed through connecting with others? Uh, and uh, particularly perhaps in the context of a small group, it might not be that, but, it might, but that's, uh, uh, that, that's often the way that people do find a, a significant blessing in, in connecting with others in a small group. How have you been blessed in, in that way? Or how have you been blessed perhaps through contributing and serving alongside others? Not just, uh, not just on your own, but the blessing of serving as part of a team. Well, we also have the opportunity to contribute to, through giving. And uh, our, our offering, we encourage people to give online, uh, but uh, if you feel more comfortable, there's a box on site as well. But we want to give thanks to God for uh, all that he's done for us and uh, the blessing that that is. Lord God, thank you for the blessing of, uh, of giving, the blessing of being able to share in your work as uh, we give back to you uh, out of the gratefulness and thankfulness. Uh, we give of our love, we give of our time, we give of our talents, but we give of our financial resources as well in your work. And uh, that too uh, is able to be a, a wonderful uh, blessing. Uh, we thank you for your provision uh, and for uh, all the ways that we have to know that uh, you have cared for us. And we pray for your kingdom work, that uh, the giving goes towards, that uh, people would be uh, finding and following you, Jesus, and uh, learning more of what it means to, um, to be shown your love and your grace, we pray. Uh, give wisdom to those who have the responsibility of distributing, uh, we ask, in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, uh, we're going to uh, have Marg come and bring uh, today's Bible reading now. And uh, we're, we're stepping back into the Old Testament uh, today and next week. Uh, Marg thought that um, uh, the Bible reading was a particular chapter uh, that, that isn't the one we're doing. Uh, she misread it at first and thought she had a whole lot of names left, right and centre that she wasn't keen to, uh, <laughs> to read out. But she got a few names, but not quite as many as she thought. No, amazing what a difference 10 chapters in the Bible can make. So the Israelites had left Egypt and they were heading off into, um, towards the promised land where God was sending them. And uh, Moses sent a little reconnaissance group in um, to check out the lay of the land beforehand. So for Numbers 13, we're going to read 1 to 3 and then 17 to 33, exploring Canaan. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they walled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob towards Lebo Hamath. They went up through the Negev and came to Hebron where Ahiman, Sheshai and Talmai, the descendants of Anak lived. Hebron had been built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land which, to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. 
but the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before God and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we certainly can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people, they're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. This is God's word. Let's join together in prayer. I'm going to leave some silent spaces for our own prayers. And to begin, I'd like to start with some excerpts from Psalm 96 in Psalms for Praying by Nan Merrill. Let's pray. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the beloved, all the earth. Sing to the Creator and bless the name above all names. Sing praise to the glorious one from day to day. Declare the splendor of the radiant one to all nations, the marvelous works of love to all peoples. For great is the beloved and greatly to be praised. For through love will come truth and justice, offering all people gifts of new life. So I invite us to take a few moments to rest in the loving presence of our God and to reflect on what we are grateful for. We give thanks for all the people and events that have led us to you and who have helped us in our journey of growing deeper into you. We also give thanks for our experiences that have shaped us and drawn us into a deeper relationship with you. We also give thanks for your love and where we see that in the ordinary things of everyday life. God of new life, we thank you that you have called each one of us to become part of the great task of transforming the church and society as you also transform us. We know this is huge, huge, but may we always rely on your enabling and your spirit at work in and through us. God of compassion, there is much that concerns us in our world today, and you hold the cries of the world, its struggles, its sadness and suffering. We 
We especially bring to you the pain and devastation of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. We hold in deep prayer those that have lost so much. We cannot even begin to comprehend the devastation and trauma of so many people. We also pray for timely and effective aid to support those in such great need. And we hear that there are many who are struggling for food. We pray that those things that are so badly needed will be able to come to those who need them. And we hold the people and the families in your comfort and love at this time and in the weeks and months that lie ahead, knowing that this is such a massive thing that's happened. God of compassion, you hold the places of war and oppression. God of compassion, you hold the victims of violence and poverty, both here and further afield in other parts of the world. God of compassion, you grieve the many injustices inflicted on our First Nations peoples. And we especially hold the situation in Alice Springs, even though it's disappeared from our news. We ask that you would help the authorities to really listen to wise Aboriginal leaders and to look at deeper underlying issues and hear their own ways of working with this to bring about real solutions rather than band-aid ideas from authorities that only make things worse. We pray for the young people there, out of control, often let down by others. We also pray for our mission partners, Danny and Beth, who are working there in the midst of all this. Give them your grace, enabling, and the power of your spirit and wisdom. God of compassion, you hold the struggles and difficulties of those we know and we bring them to you now. And today we especially hold Lawrence and his family in your comfort and support on the recent passing of his mum, Dorothy. God of compassion, you have called us to be your hands and feet wherever we are. Take us to the ones who hurt. 
May we see you in every face. May we hear you in every voice. May we welcome you in every relationship. May we give freely with true generosity. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thanks Marilyn. I, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier uh, Ruth's uh, service. Those of you who knew Ruth um, here in the morning at 10.30 and the, uh, thinking back through the week, uh, uh, Paul lost his um, father on um, uh, Monday uh, as well. So pray for Paul and Joe um, and, and uh, their, their family uh, in a special way uh, in this ongoing uh, time of loss for them as well. Well, Christina, welcome back. <laughs> Here we are again, the, the tag team uh, tag team for this summer series, uh, what we fill the slate of our lives with. Uh, I do the talking, you do the, you do the drawing, the sketching. Uh, so uh, anyway, we're grateful for you in an ongoing way. And uh, we're going to start with a big I, not the letter I today, but the, the big I, just a clue where we're going. <laughs> what we fill our eyes with. Well, where have we been thus far, though, in our summer series? Well, January, uh, we looked at uh, what we fill our heart with. We looked at what we fill our load with, what our mind is filled with, and what our cup is filled with. And last week, we reflected on what we fill our time with. Next week, we're going to wrap up this series by looking at what we fill our ears with, or what we're listening to, who we're listening to, what we're listening to, and what we're most attentive to. But today, we're looking at what we fill our eyes with or how clear a picture we have of, uh, specifically of God and God's vision for us. Some years ago, I guess I became aware in a greater way than I ever had before to the importance of helping people deal with cataracts through the work of a guy called, known as, uh, that many of you, his name you'd be familiar with, Fred Hollows. And Fred Hollows, um, uh, it seemed to me, uh, drew attention to, uh, like never before, to the importance of helping people who didn't have access to eye care uh, maintain a clear sense of vision. Uh, cataracts, it was all about cataracts, or at least my uh, understanding of it was. Some of you today will know more about cataracts than I will, because maybe you've had one yourself, or you've had it dealt with uh, uh, yourself. But um, here's me putting my optical hat on, which is very limited. I'm no, opt I'm no optometrist, so uh, <laughs> I, I stand corrected on any of these things. But what is a cataract? Well, as I understand it, a cataract is, is um, something that clouds over the normally clear lens of, of our eyes. Uh, and it can build up, it can do to our eyes something like what happens to um, uh, maybe our, our car windows during winter. They, they mist up or they cloud over. A cataract can start out small. It can barely be noticed at first. But over time, it can affect someone's vision to the point of blindness even, if it's not dealt with. And of course, that's where uh, Fred Hollows came in and, and he advocated for um, uh, a simple surgery, not just for, uh, for people in Western countries, but in non-Western countries uh, to stop them from going blind. But I am not an optometrist, I'm a pastor. So, so why am I speaking about cataracts? And why am I talking about someone's vision getting blurred or cloudy? Because spiritually, that's what happened for God's people uh, long ago in the reading that uh, from Numbers 13 just gives us a snapshot of a, of a, of a bigger story and a bigger narrative. But uh, we read, uh, Mark read some verses of that account this morning from Numbers 13. And here they were, here was God's people. They were right on the edge of the promised land. They'd been on a, on a significant journey already uh, that, that God had, had brought them on. God had brought them through. They'd wandered here, there, and everywhere. In fact, they'd lost their way time after time after time. And uh, yet here they were, right on the edge of the promised land. In, uh, in, verse 13, in chapter 13, verse 3, it says, At the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. And Paran is right next to Canaan. So, so they were nearly there. And... So what happened was that there was this advance party. God, God, uh, to, uh, this advance party was sent to scope out or explore where God was taking them. But for 10 out of those 12 
12, 12 of them went on this advance party, but for 10 out of the 12, they came back and their vision of God, of, 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 of God's character and God's capability, along with what God was calling them to, it was evident that their vision of that was cloudy and blurred instead of clear. Other than Caleb and Joshua. Caleb was mentioned in the reading, Joshua's not, but when you look at the longer narrative, you, you, you see that. Um, and, this, and so their spiritual vision became a real issue. It affected their perspective. It affected their view of what lay before them and their response to that. It caused them to hesitate. It caused them to, to, to begin to take, step back, uh, take steps backward. It, it, it caused them to even harden their hearts to God and his pathway for them as you read further on into Numbers chapter 14. So as we, many, many years later, as God's people still, think about what we fill the slate of our lives with into, this, into 2023, it's important to recognise, okay, we, we need to be careful to not be like God's people long ago because humans are humans, <laughs> whether it's thousands of years ago or still today. And we, we can fall into the same mistakes that God's people did long ago. So we need to be careful to not develop spiritual cataracts as well. We need to be careful to not allow our vision of God, as well as God's vision for us, to become clouded or blurred. But instead, we're called to keep building our picture of God and God's vision for us. So as we think about, uh, as we think about this, where, where do we start? What's the starting point? Well, the starting point at how we look at anything actually in life or in faith that lies before us, whether that's individually or whether that's together as a community of God's people. The starting point should always be centred around how clear our picture of God is. Not, not the circumstances, not the challenges that might lie before us, as daunting as they can seem at times, as was the case with the Israelites long ago, but how clear a picture do we have of God? in that, beginning with God's character. The character of God is consistent, and more than that, the character of God communicates, actually communicates to us what God is like. The, and the word that, that is over and over, it's about 250 times actually, over and over again in the Bible that describes God's character is, is and particularly in the, it's there in the Old Testament and then that flows over into the New Testament, is the Hebrew word has said which speaks of God's mercy and God's compassion and God's steadfast faithfulness and love. God's character is such that no matter what lies before us, God is all of those things, steadfastly faithful, steadfast in his love, compassionate and mercy. God is all of those things day after day after day. Summed up in, uh, in, in those verses that um, some of us know well from, from Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions fail not, or his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The, the word that's used there is this word, hesed. The Hebrew word, hesed. And it's summed up there. God's, God's steadfast faithfulness, God's great love, God's compassion, God's mercy. So I'll ask right at the start today, how clear is your picture of the character of God as you head into, two, into 2023? We're, we're a month and a half nearly in already, but, uh, but, but there's 10 and a half months still to go in 2023. How clear is your picture of the character of God? Whatever this year holds. You, you will know some of what this year holds, for sure. But some of what this year holds, you won't know. None of us do. But, but, but God's track record is 100%. Or, or, time, or time after time, God will be who he says he will be. Time after time, God will do what he says he will do. That's God's character that we need to not lose sight of in the midst of anything or everything else that has said steadfast faithfulness, love, mercy, and compassionate God that, uh, that we have relationship with. But as well as asking how clear is your picture of God's character, alongside that's an important question. How clear a picture of God's capabilities is there for you at the moment? Have we got, have you got, have I got as we head into 2023? Because for God's people here in Numbers, 
as they saw what, all, all that lay before them. What did they saw? The giants, literally. This is what most of them said in verses 27 through to 29. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and yes, we can see that it is fruitful. It flows with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people, but, <laughs> here's the but, the, but the people who live there are, are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. Uh, the, the Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and, and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites near, near the sea and along the Jordan. And the uh, descendants of, of, of Anak were giants. They were, they were huge people. They were, they were, uh, uh, so they literally saw giants uh, of people, and uh, they saw giant obstacles. They saw giant barriers. They saw all that, uh, as, as well as seeing the fruitful side of things, that was overwhelmed, it seems, by the obstacles. Their own, they recognized their own capabilities, and they saw, you know what? This is going to be tough. Now, their capabilities were limited, as ours are. But what they lost sight of, as ours are too, but what they lost sight of was this, that God's capabilities were unlimited, as they still are today. Still today, we too need reminding of that. As God's people here at BNBC early in 2023, we need reminding of, of what uh, Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah, ch Isaiah 40 uh, helps to build our picture of God and God's, ca uh, God's capacity, God's capabilities. I'll read from verse 25 of Isaiah chapter 40. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes. Look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired. He will not grow weary. His understanding no one can fathom. In fact, he gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now, those verses build our picture of God. They remind us of, of the capacity and the capability of, of our creator God, of, of God who, who's our creator, who's our, who's our redeemer, who's our sustainer. So I wonder, what is, coming back to, to numbers, what, what is your Canaan? Or what is your giant challenge that lies before you that perhaps makes you feel like a grasshopper as you think about it? <laughs> In the words of, of the Israelites, they, they even literally said this, verse 32 and 33. They spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they'd explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there were of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Amak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So literally, in, 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 out, of, out of their words, what, what's your Canaan? What, what is it that... Um, that to you is a giant challenge that might overwhelm you, that might make you feel like a grasshopper like God's people did long ago. As a church community, what, what are our Canaans? What are our giant challenges? But in the midst of that, how clear is our picture of God's capabilities? There is no promise too hard for God to keep. There is no prayer too hard for God to answer. There is no problem too hard for God to be at work in the midst of. God, do, God doesn't uh, promise to, um, uh, to, to instantly take away challenges. God doesn't promise that. God doesn't, take, uh, the, God, uh, quite, uh, God doesn't promise to, um, uh, to uh, d just, just magically uh, take us through. No, but what God does promise is a whole lot of things ab about his purposes and about his purposes for us. And he promises what is good. And Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 reminds us, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, 
not our weakness, not, 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 the, not the challenges that might lie ahead, but according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So the question is, how, big, how clear is your picture of God, God's character, but alongside that, of God's capabilities in the midst of your doubts, in the midst of your, your challenges, in the midst of the things that uh, seem, seem daunting to you, in the midst of, 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 of the, the things that seem overwhelming. How clear is your picture of God's character, of God's capabilities? But thirdly and finally today, how clear is your picture of God's calling? God's calling for his people long ago, back in Numbers, was to move forward to move forward into the land that God had for them. In, uh, in the reading there from, from Numbers chapter 13, as uh, I just backtrack uh, to it, uh, it, it was very evident that uh, God had called his people to move forward. Numbers chapter 13, God, God had led them through, through the journey they'd been on. There'd been all kinds of twists and turns in that. But verse 2 of uh, Numbers 13, uh, God, the Lord said to Moses, send some people to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Or uh, in the original Hebrew, it says, which, which I'm making a way for the people of Israel. It can be easy for God's calling or God's vision for us to get a bit fuzzy, to get a bit blurred, to get a bit clouded. And so as we start this, uh, the, this ministry year and, and the, uh, early in this ministry year uh, here at uh, Bay Morris Mordialic Baptist Church, let's remind ourselves afresh to keep God's vision for us clear. What is that vision? Well, that vision at its heart is for people to be finding and following Jesus. <laughs> that above all is what God has, has called us to called us to be a people in a place where people find Jesus and where people follow Jesus. And, 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 uh, and through the lenses of um, uh, the, other, the, the ways, I guess, underneath that that, um, uh, that, w that we recognize are important ways of doing that, of course, are, uh, as I spoke on earlier, for us to engage with and witness to our community, to be a church that engages with and, and the, the lens of community engagement and witness, the lens of being a church of small groups, not just with small groups, and the lens of seeking to be an intergenerational church. Are there challenges in these things? <laughs> you, you bet there are. Of course there are particularly arising out of these last few years. Uh, COVID and the ripple effect of COVID. COVID challenged con ch connections. It, it challenged all kinds of things in people's lives. And uh, so uh, it, it, it challenged and changed the landscape of, of, um, of people's lives in a whole lot of ways, including church life. So yes, of course there are challenges, but how important it is to be clear still about what is God has called us to be and to do as his people as his disciples, and to be people who move forward into the next chapter of what that will look like. Not to just, not to just um, be safe, not to just be comfortable, not to just uh, default back, not to just be overwhelmed. God has much more in store for his purposes for us as part of uh, what he's called us to as a church community. Our Towards 2025 vision uh, was, was set a number of years ago under God pre-COVID uh, in, in that. And yes, some of what was anticipated across the last few years hasn't come to be yet. But God's people spent much, much longer in transition towards the promised land than the few years that, uh, that, that we've been through of COVID and its challenges. Let's remember that. They spent, they spent 40 years going here, there, and everywhere in, uh, in, in the desert. And uh, so we, we need to remember that, but we need to realise that we need to move forward afresh. We, need to we, we, we are seeking to advance under, God, under God's vision for us. And I want to assure you that the leadership team uh, continually, regularly, at its uh, monthly meetings, discerns and discusses under God, what, how are we tracking on God's vision for us? What, what needs adapting? What, what might need greater attention? What might need advancing on the strategic pathways that we set as uh, we look at the, at the, at the, the landscape post-COVID and uh, what, uh, what, what needs attention there? So let's keep building God's church 
and God's kingdom, which, sta which starts with building our picture of God. So Christine has got the, the eye there, the, uh, the, the blurred or cloudy vision. Uh, that, that's, that's the visual for you to remember. Is, is, is your picture of God cl as clear as it could be? Is your picture of God's character? Is your picture of God's capabilities? Your picture of God's calling? Is that as clear as it could be? Or is it a bit fuzzy? It, does, does, it need, uh, does it need some attention? And uh, so that's the starting point, building our picture of God. Let's keep building God's church. Let's keep building God's kingdom under God. But that's built on as we each play our part, connecting, contributing to, uh, during 2023 under God. So I invite you to join me in that ongoing pathway. It's a privilege. It's a blessing. And uh, I invite you now to come before God with me in prayer. Let's pray. God, we, we need to lift our eyes afresh to you. We need to do that every day. We need to do that every week. We need to do that regularly because we know that, that our, our, our vision gets clouded. Things get blurred. Things aren't as clear uh, as, as perhaps they once were as they could be. We need to lift our eyes afresh to you, to who you are, our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer. And as we lift our eyes afresh to you to be reminded that you are completely trustworthy in who you are and your character, your has said steadfast faithfulness and love and mercy and compassion, that you are completely capable God, in, in, in fact, that doesn't do justice to who you are. You, you, you are, in, you are uh, all powerful, all capable in, in what you can do, unlimited in your capacity to work. Our weaknesses, our wanderings, our challenges, our doubts, our struggles, don't, don't stop you from being able to work in the midst of and beyond uh, the, the, the things that, that lie ahead of us. And we lift our eyes afresh, God. We need to lift our eyes afresh to what you call us to in your vision for us as your people. So fill our eyes afresh with a picture of you and a picture of your vision for us. So that when the giants in the land that lie before us, are, are, are there before us, the challenges or the circumstances, instead of overwhelming us, that our vision of you would, uh, we would see opportunities for, for you and your work in the midst of that. God, we afresh ask that you would be our vision and that you would help us to not only see things through your perspective, a learning and a growing in that, but help us to, out of that, be attentive to uh, your vision for us. We ask this in and through the wonderful, all-powerful name of Jesus, our Saviour and God, in whose name we pray. Amen.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Thanks for that message, Pastor David, and also for the accompanying graphics. That was um, helpful for us. So heading into our year here at BNBC, um, let's be careful not to develop spiritual cataracts, but to build a clear picture of who God is by understanding his character. And that song spoke of that. His capabilities, his calling for us to be continually moving forward and keeping God's vision clear. I wonder if any of you would uh, like prayer today. You know, there'll always be somebody at the front who'll be happy to spend some time with you in prayer. And for those who are watching online also, we'd be thrilled if, uh, if you wanted to make contact through the website too and happy to support you. Let me close with some words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. Looking forward to joining us with you again next week. God bless. Mm -hmm.